Hello again. This is Math 2233 coming to you from the College of DuPage. The title of this lecture is Green's Theorem. As always, please be an attentive listener as you watch this video. Green's theorem gives the relationship between a line integral around a simple closed curve C and a double integral over the plane region D bounded by C. Kind of a strange theorem, actually, um, but it w uh, came from applications uh, in the study of electrical uh, engineering is where Green came up with this. Uh, we assume that D consists of all points inside C as well as all points on C. In stating Green's theorem, we use the convention that a positive orientation of a simple closed curve refers to a single counterclockwise transversal of C. This is actually quite important. Thus, if C is given by the vector function R of T, where we go from A to B with T, then the region D is always on the left as the point R of T transverses C. Okay, so here we see that C is always on the left. And here we see that uh, C is Actually, here um, C would be always on the left going this way. And here, this is a negative orientation, not a positive orientation, because C is on the right as you transverse it this way. Uh, this is important not only for Green's theorem, but important for other theorems upcoming as well. So without further ado, let's state Green's theorem. <clears throat> Let C be a positively oriented, we talked about what that means, piecewise smooth, simple closed curve. There's actually a lot of adjectives in there in the plane. And let D be the region bounded by C. If capital P and capital Q have continuous first partial derivatives in an open region that contains D, then the line integral over the curve C of P dx plus Q dy is equal to the double integral over the region D of the partial of Q with respect to X minus the partial of P with respect to Y dA. Again, so a line integral is equal to an area integral. Turns out Green's theorem is really important in many applications, not only the electrical engineering ones, including the following. A computer engineer can use Green's theorem to find the center of mass of a platter being used to build a uh, hard disk drive. And this uses a device that we'll talk about, but it really traces the, along the outside, but determines the area by tracing along the outside. Uh, an ecologist could use Green's theorem to find the area of a lake whose shoreline is described by a pair of parametric equations. So you see you basically do the uh, integral around and it's equal to the area. And an air conditioning repair person can use Green's theorem to determine what the heat flux through a duct should be in order to determine if heat is flowing as it should. So important stuff. Again, this is the statement of Green's theorem without the details, although they are important about C and D. Uh, recall that the left side of the equation is another way of writing over here. Uh, this is the integral over C of F dot dr, where F, capital F, is P in the I direction plus Q in the J direction. We also have this notation that's used. The difference between this notation and this notation is that you've got that little circle there, which means that C is a closed curve. And also that means that you're going around it with a positive orientation. And sometimes you can't see this here very well, but this uh, I think has a little arrow in it. Uh, and that shows that in fact, it's a positive orientation. So these uh, notations here with a circle, uh, are sometimes used to indicate that line uh, integral is calculated using positive orientation of a closed curve. Another notation for positive oriented curve of D 
uh, is boundary of D, and this is the it looks like almost part of a partial derivative symbol here uh, of D. So the equation of Green's theorem could be written this way, where you're integrating this over the boundary of D, uh, which is what C uh, is, and this is the other part of the theorem. Green's theorem should be regarded as the counterpart of the fundamental theorem of calculus for double integrals. So for example, we could compare this equation one that we have right here with the statement of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So note that we're integrating derivatives and it really depends only on the values on the boundary. Okay, so, um, so and that's the same thing here because we're integrating a derivative and the is calculated by knowing only what happens on the boundary. Now, in both cases, the Green's functions and this function, there's an integral involving derivatives on the left side of the equation, and in both sides on the right, uh, involves the value of the original functions only on the boundary of the domain. And in the one-dimensional case, the domain is an integral interval, uh, a to b, and so the boundary consists just of two points, a and b. Now, Green's theorem uh, has a lot of applications, but it's not so easy to prove in general, but we will give a proof here uh, for the special case where the region is uh, either or is both type 1 and type 2. And we're going to call such regions simple regions. So this is what we're going to prove, and we're embedding in this the assumptions about C and D. Okay, first of all, we make some assumptions, as you usually do in a math proof, and we say, uh, notice that Green's theorem will be proved if we can show that the integral over C of PDX is equal to the negative of the double integral over D, the partial of uh, P with respect to Y, uh, DA. You see that's um, this part is equal to this part. And if we can show that the integral over Q on C, dy is equal to this, and if you put those two things together, you have the theorem. So we're going to focus on this one right here, and it turns out the other proof is going to be very similar, and so, uh, you know, this is really the heart of what we're doing, okay? So um, uh, here we go then. Uh, we're going to prove uh, this equation two, this one that we're focusing on by expressing D as a type 1 region. And that means that D is equal to the set of X, Y such that X runs from A to B and Y runs from G1 of X to G2 of X where G1 and G2 have the nice properties of being continuous functions. And that way we can compute the double integral this way. So the double integral of Y of, uh, excuse me, the partial of P with respect to Y DA is equal to this double integral, we're integrating first with respect to y and then with respect to x. But the integral with respect to, uh, to y, uh, we're just uh, integrating the partial with respect to of p with respect to y, so that gives us p of x, and we plug in the endpoints, so this is the integral from a to b of, and this is capital P of x, g2 of x minus p at x, and this is g1 of x, and then we're going to integrate that with respect to dx. Now here, we can now use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, well, actually, we already used the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, but now we, uh, now we have this, uh, again, another fundamental theorem of calculus that we can use. And it's important to remind ourselves of what we're uh, really looking at. So this is d. And we're taking D to be uh, composed because of the assumptions of this. So we have G2 of X up here. You have uh, G1 of X down here. And you have, and since these were type uh, 1, you have a C4 and C2. So we can certainly do that because of the assumptions on uh, D. Now notice that I'm going this way, this way, this way, and this way. And so I'm going to be computing it on this region. But here I have the integral from A to B of P of X G2 of X minus P of X G1 of X DX. So we're going to compute this for each of these. 
and see what we come up with. All right, so we break C into the union of those four curves, which we can do. On C1, we take x as the parameter and write the parametric equation as x equal x, y equals g1 of t, uh, and this goes from here to, uh, uh, x goes from a to b, thus the integral over C1, which is this one, is going to be this integral right here, and notice we're going, we're doing dx. So that's what we get for that one. Observe that C3, which is the one on top, goes from right to left, but that means that minus C3 goes from left to right. So the parametric equation of minus C3 as x equal x and y is equal to g2 of x and a less than or equal to um, x less than or equal to b. Therefore, the integral over C3 of p of x, y, dx is equal to minus the integral of minus C3 uh, dx. And so the minus sign stays there, but this is the integral from a to b of that. Um, and I cut off the the uh, oh uh, the uh, the dx, but it, it 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 should be there. Okay, so you see we know what happens on the top and on the bottom. Now on C two or C three, either could reduce to a single point. I mean we could have little uh, tips there instead of boundaries. Uh, X is constant. So that means that dx is equal to 0. That means these two integrals both are equal to 0. So hence, uh, what we find is that this integral that we're uh, integrating all around c uh, is, in fact, equal to this integral. The integral over c is equal to of p of x dx is equal to this which is the same thing as this, so it's equal to this. So you see what we've shown now so far is that the integral over c of p of x dx is equal to the negative of the double integral of the partial with respect to y of p dA. Now, it turns out you uh, can do the same thing for type 2 regions, and a similar kind of calculation uh, can be used for the uh, other piece of Green's theorem. And so if we combined both all of these things together, we would have Green's theorem. So here's a problem for you to consider. Evaluate the integral over C, and I tell you what C is. C is the triangular curve consisting of line segments from 0, 0 to 1, 0, from 1, 0 to 0, 1, and from 0, 1 to 0, 0. That's what C is. So we're uh, doing the line integral over C of x to the fourth dx plus xy dy. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, the first thing that you must do is you must draw the region, and we get it here. So we can see that we have C going around the outside. That's the proper orientation, and that is D inside. Now, this is a line integral, and we could parameterize it as a line integral, but we're going to use Green's theorem to evaluate this because uh, I want to illustrate that here. So the integral over, over C of this, and this is P of XY, and this is Q of XY, is equal to the double integral over d, and this is the partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to x. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix x, and that means y will go from uh, 0 to 1 minus x. And the um, and let's see, and, and q, the partial of q with respect to x is just going to be y. So this is what we get. Integrate first with respect to y, then with respect to x from 0 to 1. We do that uh, calculation. And note that the uh, partial with respect of p with respect to y is 0. 
That's where the zero came from. So uh, we do the integration. That's one half y squared. We evaluated it at the endpoints, and then we do the integration with respect to x. You should make sure you can do these calculations because I will be asking you to do uh, such a calculation on the um, on the um, you know on the assessments and things like that. Uh, but you do the integration, and you get that this area is 1 sixth. So you see what we did here is we calculated a line integral more easily using Green's theorem. You see, if you were doing this, you would have to parameterize that, parameterize that, parameterize that, and you'd have to be computing three line integrals instead of one double integral. Here's another problem for you. You want to integrate and I'm using different notation now. This is a, but we're uh, doing the line integral around the closed curve C. It is 3y minus e to the sine x dx plus 7x plus the square root of y to the fourth plus 1 dy, where C is the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9. Uh, this would be pretty messy if you calculate it without using Green's theorem. Why don't you see how that simplifies things? Anyway, you know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, so the region D that's bounded by this circle is the uh, inside of the disk. And uh, if you look, that makes uh, it kind of clear that what we want to do is change this into polar coordinates. And that's a circle of radius 3. Um, and uh, you go all the way around the circle. So we're changing this into polar coordinates. So we have this. And um, now what's going to happen is we're going to use Green's theorem. So this is the double integral over D. I take the partial of, with respect to X of this minus the partial with respect to Y of this and integrate it DA. And when I do DA, I'm going to get R dr d theta. And I'm going to take these partial derivatives. You should do the calculation, but you get 7 minus 3. When you, um, uh, when you take those partials. Uh, the partial of this is just going to be 7, and the partial of this with respect to y is just going to be 3. So the nasty things drop out, and we have this. This is 4, a very simple integral. This is 36 pi. Now, instead of using polar coordinates, you could have just used, no, realized that, oh, this is a disk of radius 3, and so this is, um, uh, you, you could have calculated it, uh, the area this way uh, as well. Now, in those first two examples, we found that the double integral was easy to evaluate than the line integral. But sometimes it works the other way about, and uh, so Green's theorem could be used either way because this is always equal to that. In some cases where that will be equal is, oh, if this is equal, if these two things are equal to zero or their difference is equal to uh, zero. And in fact, this comes up in complex variables. I know we haven't studied that in this class, but that will come up in complex variables when you're proving the Cauchy-Riemann equations. Um, another application of the reverse direction of Green's theorem is computing area. Now, this is surprisingly important since the area is the double integral uh, over d of 1 dA, and I've always talked about the units here, but still numerically it's the same, we might wish to choose p and q so that this difference is equal to 1. Now there's several ways you can do that. You could take, uh, you could use these various combinations here. Uh, and so uh, what can happen is Green's theorem gives you pro formulas for the, for the area of D. So you see the area, instead of calculating the area um, in more uh, traditional ways, you can calculate the simpler line integrals going over the boundary C of x dy or minus y dx or one half x minus y dy and dx. Now, so it turns out that sometimes, and we'll talk a little bit about some applications, these are, in fact, much easier to do than the um, uh, other application. And in fact, let's you have you test that. Find the area enclosed by this ellipse. x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. You know what to do. Let's see how you did.
uh, parametric equations is, might be the easiest way to do this. So you can say that x is equal to a cosine t and y is equal to b sine t, and a and b don't equal each other necessarily, and t will run from uh, 0 to 2 pi. This is kind of a classical uh, parameterization of an ellipse. Uh, we talked about this early in the course, and you also talked about this in calculus, too, at the College of DuPage. So, by the discussion we had, a is equal to 1 half this integral. But now we will use the parameterization. Okay, so what happens is x is uh, a cosine t, and dy is uh, going to be b cosine t, and the whole thing is dt minus, and y is going to be b sine t, and uh, dx uh, is going to be minus a sine of t dt. And so you can factor out the ab over 2. You got the 1 half hour over here. You factor out the ab, and you're really just integrating this because cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, so that gives you 1, and so this is pi ab. Now, this formula actually is used uh, to do a planometer, planometer um, tool. And this is a mechanical instrument that is used for measuring the area of a region by tracing its boundary. And here's a picture of, uh, of how you might build one. Um, these devices are useful in all the sciences and biology for measuring the area of leaves or wings, in medicine for measuring the size of cross sections of organs or tumors, in forestry for estimating the size of a forest region. We talked about a lake thing, and so there's a lot of things that you can do with this. And I talked about this as a picture uh, of it. And uh, the wheel partly slides and partly rolls perpendicular to the tracer arm. And uh, these things measure the distance that the wheel rolls, so that is proportional to the distance that you went around, and that's proportional to the uh, the area. And um, this thing is explained in these these references, and actually it's a nice science fair project. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math; it will make you strong. And now, more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. May God bless you all.